Everybody's Chris from Prepare Your Mind 101. You need to stick around to the end of the video. We're going to announce the winner of the Hidden Woodsman Cryptek Haversack giveaway. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at a knife that I purchased at Blade Show, a brand that I haven't reviewed anything from before, but I plan on doing some more here in the future. And that is the White River Backpacker and the aftermarket C2G Fab neck sheath that I had made for it. So don't go away. So generally every year since, well, every year, I've been going two years now, but uh, when I go to Blade Show, I set myself a limit and I'll pick out one knife that I want to buy because uh, I'm going to pick up all sorts of other stuff for reviews and things like that. But last year it was the Entrek Forester. This year, the one that I decided on was by this company, White River Knives. And the reason I went to White River Knives to begin with was to check out the uh, Firecraft line, which I'll be reviewing here in the near future. Absolutely love them. I can't wait to get my hands on them. But they had this one that was kind of like a large necker, uh, just kind of a mid-size, mid-tech knife. I didn't have anything really in that range, so I picked this up. And this one is called the Backpacker. Now they offer this in two styles, with the paracord wrap or with micarta handles. Some people prefer the micarta handles. Because I intended on using this as a necker, that's why I went with the paracord handle wrap. It is made from S30V steel. Very nice uh, tumbled finish look to it. These cost, this cost me 90 bucks. So is that a good price, is that a bad price? Well, this, this knife, this review, this is basically for people that like knives that just like checking out new stuff. I can't really look at this knife and tell you, you need this knife because it's going to do X, X, X task, uh, great. This is just a cutting knife. That's what I use it for. Uh, when, I, when I do wear it as a necker, it, I'm, I'm cutting packages, I'm cutting core. I'm, I'm cutting whatever. I'm not bushcrafting with it. I'm not doing whatever with it. But I do like the really nice choil. Could this be used as a really nice, uh, you know, like defensive neck knife? I think so. Uh, it, it, it just situates itself really good in the hand. Feels very secure with that deep choil. It's got some nice jimping on the back and I usually don't care for jimping but they seem to have found just kind of like that magic medium of an aggressive jimping that's not like killing your thumb to use it so it does what jimping is supposed to do which is just secure your thumb but it's not overly aggressive they've kind of rounded it a little bit uh, of course, S30V being one of the super steels that has been around for several years, so a lot of people are familiar with it. Uh, it's not a stainless, it's going to stain less. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit more resistant to weather. It's going to have better edge retention. But you got to remember, this is the thing that we go back and forth about, you know, like with the, with the Jessmic. We're going to eventually offer the Jessmic and CPM3V. Uh, 01, great steel, you gotta take care of it a little bit more. Uh, CPM3V, great steel, more expensive, gotta take care of it a little less. But it is definitely easier to sharpen 01 than it is 3V. So you have that balance. Edge retention, harder to sharpen. Slightly less edge retention, easier to sharpen. So S30V is kind of like in there. It's, it's, it's not bad. I, I haven't had any real problems sharpening this. So it's, you know, this is just going by my hands-on experience, not anything technical. But I've had less trouble 
uh, sharpening S30V than I usually do with 3V. 3V, you got to take your time. But yeah, it's it's a little bit on the large side for a necker. Now, just by way of example, this is my favorite necker, and that is the Essie Kandaroo. So I'll, I'll put a cut scene in here so you can kind of see these together. Now, the, when I generally speaking for neck knives, I like smaller neck knives because I don't want a big giant full-size knife hanging off my freaking neck. If I want a full-size knife, I'll put it on my belt, something like that, put it in a pocket. So this is kind of like pushing the max at what I would consider to be a comfortable neck knife. Now, neck knives are one of those things that everybody's going to disagree on. Some people don't like neck knives at all. Some people don't like having things around their neck. Some people like full finger grips. Some people like the, the shorter grips. This is definitely a, a full hand, full finger grip. But I could see this uh, being useful in a lot of things, uh, just precision cutting. So that's the thing, it's like, this is more of like a show and tell. I don't even really know what I could do with this knife on video that like makes it an interesting to watch video. You want to watch me cut paper, you want to watch me cut cardboard rope, you know, whatever. It's just one of those knives. It's a cutter. It's meant for cutting things. So that's that. I've been playing around with this for a little bit. Now here's the thing. If I got a, you know, I always talk about the good and the bad. That's the good. The bad was I didn't like the Kydex sheath it came with. You got good knife makers, you got good sheath makers. Uh, very few times do you find someone that's a good knife maker that also makes awesome sheaths. Uh, they usually make sheaths that are good enough. So they came with this Kydex sheath, but it was so tight uh, to, to get it, snap it in, and to draw it. It was just way too tight. So since I was at Blade Show and Gary from C2G Fab was there, I just gave the knife to him to take home to make me a uh, neck knife sheath. So between these two, I basically had him make the exact same neck knife sheath that he made for my SE Kandaru uh, with the carbon fiber looking Kydex. So it always looks good, no matter if you're in the woods or if you're just wearing it around town. Very simple. He's really, really good at neck sheaths. They're, it's not a, a difficult sheath to do. I like to just keep them simple, not put a bunch of stuff hanging all over it. Again, you do all that crazy stuff, you build up the bulk that's hanging around your chest and him having these very, very slight thumb ramps on his neck sheath. It doesn't look like much, but it is definitely enough to help you push that sheath off of the knife. So that's why I generally send people to Gary if they want a neck, uh, neck sheath for something. I know he makes a lot for the Condor Mini Bush Lore, the SE Kandaroo, the Topps Tebow. All those things. He does a great job on that sort of stuff, and he's got one in the mail right now. Uh, I'm waiting on releasing these until the uh, the JX4 comes out, but he made a really freaking cool adjustable angle uh, cross draw JX4 uh, bush bat sheath. I'll be showing you here soon. So that is it. Ain't got much else to say about that. Uh, like I said, it cost me 90 bucks. Uh, the, the website is right here. Actual link to the website is in the description box below. And if you didn't see it, I would highly suggest going back to my Blade Show 2016 videos and look at the White River Firecraft line video because those are the ones I'm most excited about. When the, when the FC4 gets to me, when, it, when it's all done and all that, I'm probably going to be using that knife just as much as my own stuff. More often than not, I err toward my own designs, the adjustment and that sort of thing, the JX4. Some knives are so cool, I still want to use them, and that is one of them. So stay tuned for that. Now, as promised, we're going to announce the winner of the Hidden Woodsman Cryptek Haversack giveaway. So hopefully you were able to comment on that video, get entered into the drawing. And the winner is this person right here. So congratulations. Uh, please send me an email at preparemy101 at gmail.com and we'll get that uh, sent out to you right away. And definitely check out uh, the Hidden Woodsman 
uh, website here on the screen and check out all the great stuff that he does. You know, the haversacks, the day rocks, the signal panels, the fire kit bags. I mean, even if you're getting a couple of, like the small things like the fire kit bags with the zippers and things like that, great additions to your kit. Other than that, uh, I've been a updates, just been a little bit swamped here lately, trying to get my bearings again as far as getting on schedule with the videos. Summer is not easier. You'd think it would be. Uh, for me, it's actually harder. Uh, wife and kids are out of school, wife's a teacher, so a lot more family stuff going on. It's kind of hard to plan and schedule and do things like that. But uh, I've got a couple videos that I've been meaning to do that I'm really overdue on getting done. Like I want to do the cold fire extinguisher. I love those cold fire extinguishers. Uh, uh, the ones I've tested so far uh, work awesome. Uh, so we're going to do a video on that. I've got the zombie tools, Parabellum, I've got to do, and a bunch of other stuff. I just got in some freaking monster through night death ray, the TN40. I took some uh, video of that, shooting long distance with it. Freaking awesome light. Uh, lots of cool stuff coming. Uh, CRKT burler axe, uh, probably going to get in some more silky saws. We just need to get back out in the woods and do the things I want to do there. Uh, more base camp in the bag videos, this, that, and the other thing. I just need things to slow down so I can like concentrate and have actually a couple straight hours time to work. So maybe summer's not that great. Maybe we just need to skip forward to mid-August when I get I get my uh, my work hours back, my eight-hour work day. So that'll be awesome. All right, guys, other than that, uh, stay tuned for more videos this week I'll be doing. And uh, don't kill yourself out there uh, playing Pokemon Go. Don't. I'm actually taking the daughter Pokemon hunting here after this. we got to go to the park. That's where all the Poke Stops are. So kids freaking love it. And you know what? Before anyone gives any crap to people playing Pokemon Go, I've been able to get my kids outside walking distances more often and easier since that freaking game came out usually they want to sit inside play with their tablets you know they don't want to go outside they go outside for like a day you know for like an hour or so and then they're back inside you freaking hand them a phone with pokemon go they're outside for hours walking like three miles so it's a way that i can actually get them out in the woods do some hiking and exercise why am i even talking about that anyway probably because everyone else is so other than that, uh, I'll be back with another video here soon, so see you then.